Religion and good morals are the only solid foundation of public liberty and happiness. Samuel Adams, American statesman and philosopher. The church is not the master or the servant of the state, but rather the conscience of the state. It must be the guide and the critic of the state, but never the tool. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., American civil rights advocate. Welcome back to Cool Seminary Tutorials. Hi, I'm Professor Wendy. Today's video is the third and last in an exciting series about religious freedom. Everybody's got to know this. You'll find out why as we look at three important questions. First, what does religious freedom have to do with each of us? Second, why is religious freedom critical to the world? And third, what are the ethics and the hope that can result from religious freedom in the world? In her 2012 study of the relationship between religions and a secular society, Canadian attorney and professor Janet Epp Buckingham concluded not only that religion is a fundamental part of human dignity for many, but also that religions generally promote ethical, law-abiding behavior in their adherence and thereby foster the moral self-government that is required and expected of citizens in a democratic society. Similarly, in his visit to Philadelphia last year, Pope Francis emphasized that our rich religious traditions have an enduring power to open new horizons, to stimulate thought, to expand the mind and the heart. They call to conversion, reconciliation, concern for the future of society, self-sacrifice in the service of the common good, and compassion for those in need. At the heart of their spiritual mission is the proclamation of the truth and dignity of the human person and human rights. Within societies that have guaranteed religious freedom in order to protect human rights, there is a deep-seated commitment to the best interest of all citizens, including non-adherents or atheists. Thomas J. Rees, chair of the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, understands that freedom of religion is important to believers and non-believers. Where freedom of religion is not respected, we see conflict and even bloodshed. Conflicts over religion can destabilize whole nations, cause economic uncertainty, and provide a breeding ground for terrorists. The Pew Research Center and others have demonstrated that a lack of religious freedom is closely associated not only with persecution of religious minorities, but also with higher levels of social hostilities in general. In countries without religious freedom, social violence justified by religious views has led to persecution that included personal and economic suffering and, in numerous cases, death. The 2013 Pew study reports that organized groups used force or coercion in an attempt to dominate public life with their perspective on religion in 88 or 44 percent of the 198 countries included in the study. In Iraq, for example, militant Muslims organized violence against businesses owned by Christians and other religious minorities, often reportedly out of anger that the businesses sold alcohol. A campaign targeting liquor store owners beginning in May of 2013 led to the killing of 12 people in Baghdad. Religious groups in countries where permitted to do so attempted to prevent other religious groups from operating in 60 or 30 percent of the 198 countries in the study. In Burma, for example, Buddhist residents in one township tried to prevent Muslims from living in the area, reportedly displaying signs that said the town had been, quote, purified of Muslims. Finally, assaults and other hostilities aimed at religious groups where activities considered offensive or threatening to the majority faith occurred in 78 or 39 percent of the 198 countries studied. For example, in Pakistan, Sunni Muslim clerics in the Kasur district organized an attack on an Ahmadiyya Muslim man and his family in March of 2013, reportedly after he refused to renounce his faith. Because of the high incidence of hostilities in the world in which religion may be implicated, there are those who would argue that a completely atheistic society with no religion may present the best environment for securing peace and human rights. However, the Institute for Economics and Peace and others have studied this very question and concluded that having less religion in a country does not make it more peaceful. 
citing examples of communist states such as Russia, the Czech Republic, and North Korea. The Encyclopedia of Wars, an extensive study published in 2008, chronicles 1,763 wars throughout human history and names just 123 as religious in nature, a little under 7%. So it appears it is a lack of religious freedom rather than religion itself that fosters religion-related hostilities. Rachel Woodcock, an Australian writer, has proposed that religion has taken on extra significance today because globalization is challenging and changing everything. She gave the example of a dictator who gassed and bombed certain religious ethnic citizens, yet used television to make a public show of praying to Allah. Religion, unfortunately, provides a useful cover and powerful motivator for the evil-hearted, she wrote. That religion can be so markedly different in the hands of the power-hungry, as opposed to the altruistic and virtuous, really says more about human psychology than it does about religion, her article concluded. Indeed, Joshua Wright, a terrorism analyst, has linked no less than four psychosocial factors to the well-documented high incidence of militant Islamic terrorism in contemporary society. These include coalitional commitments, the desire to protect one's affinity group, higher average level of religious commitment, and the threat of religious homogenization, which may lead to reactions of intergroup conflict. Although religious freedom provides many benefits to citizens where it exists, policies of religious and other freedoms do hold the potential for abuse. So it has been necessary to employ checks and balances against abuse in conjunction with the privilege of religious freedom from the very beginning. Champion of religious freedom Thomas Jefferson wrote that civil governments were indeed justified in interfering with religious freedom when its principles break out into overt acts against peace and good order. Isaac Backus in the state of Massachusetts qualified the freedom to act in all religious affairs according to the full persuasion of one's own mind as long as others are not injured thereby. And President George Washington insisted that all who live under the protection of the nation were expected to demean themselves as good citizens giving the government in return for the privilege of citizenship their effectual support. So, in effect, the U.S. government protects the rights of religious people and institutions to practice their faith openly and freely without governmental interference, get this, unless the practice harms others or undermines other compelling societal interests. For example, when a parent in Indiana quoted the Bible in an attempt to justify child abuse on the grounds of religious freedom, she was met with an eight-page prosecutor's rebuttal, stating that the beating goes beyond the religious instructions she cites from the Bible. The accused parent is by law guaranteed a fair hearing in court, but religious freedom laws do not guarantee a free pass to anyone to break the other laws of the land or to injure another person or group. Without such checks and balances, policies of religious freedom could open the door to rampant self-serving abuses, as in the example of an abusive parent. On the other hand, armed with checks and balances that honor the intent of the U.S. nation's founders, U.S. citizens own and cherish an ethic of religious freedom that is in the best interest of each citizen, American society, and the world. In return for protection of religious freedom, the time-honored expectation of the U.S. government is, and always has been, an ethical one. Good citizenship, which includes the civic duty to uphold religious freedom for all, including those with whom we deeply disagree. As expressed by the Religious Freedom Education Project of the First Amendment Center, Respect for the religious rights of others is a civic virtue necessary to maintain peace in a religiously diverse society. While all faiths are welcome, no one faith is to look to government to endorse their religious truth or to suppress someone else's. So the ethics of religious freedom include both a care to protect one's own rights and well-being and b a civic responsibility to protect the rights and well-being of others. We 
have already seen in a previous video that the whole world really craves the religious freedom enjoyed by citizens of the U.S. and other countries that uphold religious freedom. We have been reminded of the profoundly precious nature, design, and ethic of religious freedom. And so we conclude with a well-grounded hope that a robust commitment to religious freedom can foster constructive relationships of respect and peace within communities and that our commitments to religious freedom can provide a solid practical ethic to help secure peace and well-being in a nation and in the world's future. Unfortunately, there's a dangerous myth in the world that suggests religious freedom is a free-for-all in which persons of certain religions may be allowed to practice their beliefs regardless of the impact on others. The myth includes the notion that anyone, including religiously motivated terrorists, can literally get away with murder, and that there's nothing anyone can do about it except live in fear, which is exactly the response such terrorists desire. We have seen that quite the opposite is and always has been true. Religious freedom, when properly understood and enforced, is a national and a global treasure that guarantees our human rights and dignity so that no one should have to live in fear of religious persecution of any kind. Religious freedom requires in no uncertain terms, however, the diligent understanding, caretaking, and support of all, and for all, its beneficiaries. Religious freedom is a basic human right tied to freedom of conscience that belongs to all the people of the world. To establish and secure religious freedom for ourselves and for all others is to pave a much needed path to peace, productivity, and goodwill for all the world's citizens. You and I are part of the leadership that can help make this happen. I'm Professor Wendy. Thanks for watching. Remember, Click to subscribe and most of all, have fun learning.